Is Left Behind Biblical? In the 90s, Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins wrote a best-selling novel called Left Behind, depicting the rapture of the saints and chronicling the actions of a group of people trying to survive the events of the tribulation described in Revelation 6 through 19. Three years later, Cloud 10 Pictures released the film adaptation of this hit book starring Kirk Cameron and Clarence Gilliard Jr. This series actually got the attention of a lot of people and many souls were saved as a result of the focus that it placed on prophecy and end times events. So I personally really like this movie and it's actually pretty well done for a Christian film. I especially thought that casting Gordon Curry as Nikolai Carpathia was an excellent choice. But is the movie actually biblically accurate? Let's put it to the test. So the entire movie is based on the premise that the rapture takes place before the 70th week of Daniel begins. This 70th week of Daniel, also known as the seven year tribulation, is said to begin when the Antichrist makes a seven-year covenant with Israel. The movie gets all of this right, and so much more, so I'm going to start them off with a positive 50 points. They definitely deserve it. Now, I know a lot of people disagree with me about the literal seven-year tribulation and the pre-tribulation rapture, but I've already made videos on these topics, so if you're interested in the scripture that leads me to these conclusions, Check out these videos. You'll find links to my Prophecy Explained playlist at the top of your screen, at the end of this video, and in the description to this video. So the opening scene depicts an attack on Israel by fighter jets that are then miraculously destroyed in mid-air before they can harm the Jews. This is probably a portrayal of the attack on Israel by a nation known in scripture as Gog, found in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Now, in this passage, we are told that God will miraculously protect Israel, and a lot of people think that it will happen before the tribulation begins, because Ezekiel 39 verse 9 tells us that they will be cleaning up the bodies of the attacking army for seven years. But there's a problem with this theory. Daniel 9 tells us that all the prophecy concerning Israel will be fulfilled within the 70 weeks of years from the command to rebuild Jerusalem in 444 BC to Christ's death on the cross and then during the final seven year tribulation. So basically, the prophecy in Ezekiel has to happen inside of the time when God said all of the prophecy about Israel will take place. Just because it takes them seven years to clean up the bodies doesn't mean it happens before the tribulation begins. Actually, it probably happens at the end of the tribulation because the army described has some pretty primitive weapons. By the end of the tribulation, as a result of all the judgment of the time, including the worldwide earthquakes, massive meteor showers, and much more, their technology will no doubt be set back significantly. I mean, just think about all the things that wouldn't work anymore if the internet suddenly stopped working because an earthquake has taken out the internet hubs, and meteors have taken out all of the satellites. Anyway, I have to give them a negative one for this scene. Sorry. But like I said, I really did like the depiction of the Antichrist in this movie. There's a whole plot line about ten kingdoms ruled by ten kings who are then empowered by the Antichrist. And later on in the books, he actually takes on three of those kings who fight against him. It's a pretty cool take on the vision of Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel's prophecy, there are 10 kings and three of them are subdued by the Antichrist when he comes to power. So here's something a lot of people bring up as a problem with the movie. 2 Thessalonians 2.11 says that the people who follow the Antichrist received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they might be damned who believe not the truth. Some people try to use this to teach that no one who has ever heard the gospel before the rapture will be able to accept it after the rapture. They say that they'll just be deceived and believe the lie of Satan because they receive not the love of the truth before the rapture. Well, this is just incorrect for a host of different reasons. First, notice that Thessalonians 
is talking about those following the Antichrist, saying that because they follow him, God will send them a strong delusion that they will believe a lie. It seems obvious that this is speaking about what they do after the tribulation begins that brings this strong delusion, not whether or not they rejected the gospel before the rapture. I stood right here. I preached it. And I was good. But they're gone. Also, in the tribulation, there's so many people who get saved that the Bible calls it a great multitude that no one can number. Just before this statement, Revelation describes a multitude in heaven of 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, a number which equals more than 100 million. If this number over 100 million was countable, then apparently the multitude in chapter 7, which cannot be numbered, is greater than this. That's a whole lot of people saved during the tribulation. It would be unthinkable to eliminate everyone who had already heard the gospel before and still have enough people left over who could make up this huge multitude of believers during this time. But that leads me to a larger question raised by this movie. It depicts Christians immediately being saved and forming themselves into a church after the rapture. But the Bible calls this time the end of the time of the Gentiles. The tribulation is not supposed to be the time of the church. It's supposed to be the time of Israel. I mean, if the Holy Spirit's working through believers is what's restraining and holding back the Antichrist, spoken of in 2 Thessalonians, then it would be strange to see churches immediately popping back up as soon as Christ raptured them out. There will be many coming to faith in the tribulation, but Revelation describes the revival this way. It seems to start with two Jewish witnesses that seem to come at the beginning of the tribulation. The words of these witnesses lead to 144,000 Jewish people being saved and becoming witnesses themselves. And from these comes the great multitude. Don't forget that the tribulation is all about the Jews and their witness to the world. So I would say that the Gentile believers will not immediately spring up after the rapture. First, the witnesses will lead the Jews to revival, and the Jews will then witness to the Gentiles of the world in that time. That being said, these books and movies are really good, and I highly recommend them because they really help to give a sense of what the tribulation will be like. There's a real value in that. I'm giving it an incredible score of positive 49, or 99% biblical. Because of you. So thank you, Buck. What do you think? Have you seen Left Behind? Let me know what score you would give it in the comments below. I think we are all in agreement. Now, before I go, I want to sincerely thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe to support the channel and to see more content like this. I really appreciate it. Also, I want to remind you that the whole Bible is ultimately about one thing, the redemption of mankind by Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible teaches that all men are sinners and that no sinner can have eternal life with God in heaven because we must pay for our sins for eternity in hell. That's the bad news. But the good news is that Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sin on the cross. Since our sin has been paid for by Christ, all that is left for you to do is to accept that gift by faith. If you've never accepted the gift of God by faith, won't you do that today? Leave a comment or send me a message and I'll be happy to talk to you more about having your sins forgiven by Jesus Christ.